doing you enough favors i feel like i should just like produce the hell out of that like do like a duh, 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 welcome to like That's do a fine. whole thing behind it i don't i don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah that <laughs> maybe i did or, it this or, time i, I probably or what the uh, radio do djs do like that well it's uh under the skin today by behind the hype 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 yes a wooga just doing a wooga I mean, this movie, I mean, there's boobs in it. So. There are boobs in it. Yeah. Yeah. Awooga. Awooga. <laughs> A little bit of awooga. <laughs> this uh, is two out of five awooga. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. So, uh, so here we are having our very mature and serious discussion about Under the Skin at Behind the Hype. Mm-hmm. Your host is always Brian Dressel. With me, as always, is Chewy Darso. Hello. And Jonathan Hardesty. Yep, I made it. <laughs> My God, that is not how I expected to start this episode. Awooga? Awooga was not A-wooga, where I wooga, thought wooga. We'd, we'd be. Awooga, wooga, wooga. Oh, boy. Uh, so this is week four of ScarJo Month. I, as we have gone through the strangest catalog of Scarlett Johansson's movies, uh, but it's been a lot of fun. For the most part. Yeah, I don't uh, regret yeah. watching any of the movies. No, no, and we had a good one in there. Well, pretty good one with Lucy last week. And then we had a really good one this week with Under the Skin. Yeah. At least I think it's really good. But uh, this is my third time seeing it. On my third watch, I'm like, oh, this is why everyone hates it. Like, I don't feel that way, but I was able to follow along with them a little bit more. Okay. I might I at some point it. ask you to oh, elaborate on that. I the hell out of it. I didn't. Apparently, I've never talked to any of those people. Yeah, I, I get it. I totally get it. I disagree, but I get it. Um, we'll get there. Okay. We'll get there sooner and later if it's really bothering you. That's well, fine. We didn't talk about this at all. Well, no, I, I, I was preparing. Uh. Oh, man, throwing us curveballs left and right. My goodness. <laughs> for so long. We watched the movie last night. <laughs> um. <laughs> you were supposed to be doing work today. Instead, apparently, you were looking at forums. Well, Yeah. <laughs> um i had to do a lot of work today it sucked i needed a break every now and then <laughs> uh, anyhow so this week we were talking about under the skin which i would easily say is the best one we've seen so mm. far probably my favorite performance of her as an actor full stop um so i'm really excited to talk about this one uh but before we do do we have any where have they been doing we watched sing another thousand times yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's still good in it every time she is yep she is one of the songs that corin was still willing to watch yeah You'd, it's surprising that it doesn't change each time you watch it i thought i would start to like it a lot less and uh nope i but still enjoy it, it it's still it's a good movie yeah it's well constructed there's nothing <laughs> really in it that, that's offensive or anything worth not enjoying yeah unless you're corin and there's one part that makes him jump and now is officially the most horrifying thing he didn't scream at it today oh he didn't that's good no. the past couple days when it's gotten up he would just stand point at the screen and point at the screen scream and cry it was uh oh it was no no but we threw it now. that's not good yeah um so let's talk under the skin uh john can you do a very quick breakdown of what happens in under the skin you can be yeah, as yeah. vague as the movie is if you if you want to be sure sure uh scarlett johansson brings a a few dudes home to this dark place and lets them submerge in some dark liquid and they get destroyed or eaten or whatever. And then she decides she doesn't want to do that anymore and runs away and takes off her skin. And gets burned. <laughs> it's true. Yep. That, that is pretty much she does what, get burned. What happens in the movie? Um, the only thing you didn't mention is that she's an alien, or at least we assume she's an alien based on what she looks like in the lights in the sky after that first scene. Yeah. Right. That's really the only hints we have at Alien. But it makes sense. Yeah. No, I, I think even the description the, says an alien, so. <laughs> the uh, IMDb says a mysterious young woman. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, she's and mysterious. I think, 
Amazon calls her a, a supple young woman. I, like every service Ew. had like a different descriptor for her, and I'm like, oh, what? Don't <laughs> supple. Ugh. Yeah. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> Points to the yes. the synopsis writers for streaming services. Come on. Gross. <laughs> right. Uh. <laughs> Ugh, I don't, I don't like that. Supple is a word you use in romance novels. Yeah, not in. Oh, not, just, not for this. They're just trying to get people to tune in because she gets naked in it. Like that's what that is. Yeah. It's like, oh, this right. might be the one where she gets naked. Um, which I guess we'll just mention that as briefly as we can because who cares? She gets naked. She gets naked, and every time it's important to the plot and not really shot in like a super sexy. She only way. gets fully mm-hmm. naked one. Well, I guess twice. Yeah, but it Once doesn't matter. When like, she's seducing one, when she's like. What do I look like naked? Well, and she's totally naked in the beginning of the movie. Did yeah. Is she naked? Yeah. Oh. She gets naked all over the damn thing. It doesn't matter. For some ma- reason, I thought she had... Whatever. Yeah, she cloned herself in the beginning and was it's, like, there's two of her yeah, naked. It's, it's so yeah. insignificant, I don't remember. Yeah, it, it's yeah. not a... It's whatever. <laughs> it's a shame that it was part of the headlines when the movie was coming out. Well, of course. But, whatever. That's all I have to do say. Do what you can to get people to watch, right? <laughs> Pretty much. That's what... No boobies. No, that's people. <laughs> What's the line from King Kong? Will there be boobies? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Boobies, sir. You know, boobies. Boobies. <laughs> boob 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 boob. It's weird that that's my favorite line from Peter Jackson's King Kong, but it really is. <laughs> boobies. I haven't watched. You made. You had me watch that once. And like the, it, I think the line. same night that we saw Kong Scott Island, we came home. I'm like, no, we gotta watch the Peter Jackson yeah, one now. More a- monkeys. That was a lot of gorilla. <laughs> yeah. I, More I like gorilla than you can shake a banana at. <laughs> That's offensive. We don't like bananas. <laughs> it's true. They, they don't. What, what's the line from remember. Planet of the Apes? I don't remember. Yeah. All right. We're getting, we're getting lost. This is going to be another podcast where we're just like all over the place. Another podcast where I'm like, fuck, where the ha- I got to cut something out there. None of this makes any fucking sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's okay I can use that to segue into the movie which is really gonna fuck me in the edit I'm gonna be really mad at myself tomorrow when I'm cutting this but anyhow I can use it to segue into the movie a lot of the movie doesn't make any fucking sense and I that, that's kind of where I want to start with like a, I'll start with the negative stuff or I start we've been talking about it for a while continue with the negative stuff what, what people don't like about the movie is that it it kind of goes out of its way to ask questions and then go as far away from an answer as possible like, it tries to make sure that there are questions at almost every major point in the movie and really has no interest in answering them. I think the only questions this movie pose, poses is the same questions that you assume are being asked in ScarJo's head. <laughs> I mean, sh- well, no, because I'll just start with the, for the most part, but not all of them. Uh, the first the beginning woman, the the one that the moto man takes out of the ditch, like right out of the gate. Is she a version of whatever Scarlett Johansson is that died and now she needs to just pass the baton, if you will? Or is she a woman that the moto man killed, left her, went and got Scarlet, and then dragged this woman up to Scarlet's van thing so she could take her clothes and her identity and then join the world to start eating dudes? Both totally acceptable answers. Both have tons of people who think that that's absolutely the only way it could be, and there's nothing in the movie to support either answer. I don't even know that. I don't, to me, that's not a question. That's just the way the movie starts. So yeah, we came to different conclusions, but I don't. To me, there's no question there. That's just different way of interpreting things. Well, yeah, but I'm saying like that's what the movie does throughout. Like it has like whenever we get to these sort of things, it's just kind of like no, this is just what's happening. Like it's not going to try to go into stories. It's not going to. Is that it's... really what people dislike about this movie? Yeah, it, it tells. Then they don't sto- like art. <laughs> they don't like this art. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm sure they complain about subtitles too. Yeah, well, <laughs> start watching films at night when your family is asleep, and you'll get used to subtitles. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll go get Interstellar for you. <laughs> Do you want a bunch of questions with a lot of answers? All right, let's go watch Interstellar. I'm not saying I agree with them. I think what they're saying is fair, though. Like, if you were just trying to... Not fair, necessarily. But if you're just trying to enjoy some sci-fi that you chucked on because it has Scarlett Johansson in it, who's like an A-lister, she's not going to make something that's going to be totally fucking weird and make no sense. 
and then you get this. I can see people, it's kind of like the whole, I went to go see Drive because I like Fast and Furious. Yeah, okay. I can see the argument of this isn't what I was looking for, but yeah. saying it's a bad movie because but, of that. But that's where the internet is now. This wasn't what I was yeah. looking for. Therefore, it sucks. Like that's just Well, kinda, that's just childish. I don't well, disagree with you. I'm just saying that's kind of why there is a negative cloud around the movie, okay. at least from what I can tell. I mean, yeah, I, I could see that, but uh, one aspect I could also see as being a problem is like if you're used to Scarlett Johansson in more of like the Marvel movies, for example, or more action fare, or hell, even Lucy from last week, just that silly genre thing, and then to go to this, it is a different expectation. You have to set a different expectation that you might not realize going into Under the Skin. So it might be jarring. It might be tougher to get used to. I mean, as an as an option, I I generally Actors enjoy like the movie to actually try sometimes and just like you like uh I, I totally think john's onto something with that because it is it's totally different than everything else no, she's I ever agree done with that. well no because we, a girl with the pearl earring that's a lot of intensity and no i'm talking little... about just the filmmaking of it not just okay. the character because the, the girl with the pearl earring should a script for everything yeah. For this movie, she had to go and get her the proper license so she could drive that van around Scotland and talk to random dudes on the street in character. Like, it's just a whole different style of acting. Yeah. So, like, that's what I mean. I'm not ta- like, sure, the characters might be similar in the end product, but making the film, it's unlike anything else she's ever done. Yeah. And I understand that uh, some people might only see her fluff movies, but that's just, I don't know. I don't think it's fair to assume that she only makes them. So if you're disappointed in this movie, then it's not her fault no but it can i mean it's yeah it's definitely not her fault but it is it is a, a distraction it can be a distra- distraction and I'm, I'm i'm reaching here but like with a uh, girl with a pearl earring that's like more oscar baity you know you could you could assume that more high profile actors and actresses would be doing something like that art house tends to be a little bit different like i don't know people set, tend to not have really any idea how to approach art house films in general and it does take a bit of shifting how you watch well, because yeah. it demands your engagement mentally. Yeah. And the the thing with per- this particular art house film is that it, it came out when all the Marvel shit's going on. So everyone knows who she is. She's super high profile. Everyone loves her. And then you put her in a super art house film and you tell the internet that she gets naked in it. So a lot of people who don't like art house films are running to this thing and then going, that movie sucked because they are not the audience for it. Nope. But that's another thing of like that could be that again that negative cloud because yeah, I've already said what I feel about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying it's okay. I'm not saying I agree. I'm not with saying you. that you do. I'm just saying what I think of that. <laughs> yes, Brian, you do. Damn it. I'm just voicing my opinion on their opinion. Your opinion's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying maybe you should rewatch the movie with more of an open mind and be willing to engage with your cinema and not just be passive and want explosions and tits. I mean, that's very true. Fair. I mean, that, that would most of what's out there. <laughs> that would segue uh, nicely to just the fact that like, I've seen this twice. Brian, you said you saw it three times. Yeah. Uh, my second time around, I didn't care for it as much as I did the first time. I liked it a lot the first time and I, didn't quite enjoy it as much. And I think some of that was because I already knew what they were doing. And the fact that I knew that, well, they're going to raise a lot of these things and just stare at this, like it's going to be slow paced and then not answer any of them. And I've read up on the book itself, which does the opposite of this movie. So it's like, it's a weird thing to have done some research on this because they literally say in the book, like I'm an alien and I feel this and these humans are weird. And (laughs) they've checked all that out. So it's, it lessened for me and there's also a few scenes that um one scene in particular that with kids watching it now just inexplicably just put a sour taste for the rest of the movie and i forgot it was in that movie in the movie too but... oh i always remembered it because it hurt first time i saw this yeah. movie this yeah. movie i would agree that this movie is more effective the first time around i think it's well here i, I have two things about that one aren't most movies yeah. I mean, for the most part, like some of them like, get better with multiple viewings, but for the most part, you know, there's kind of a one and done thing. Not T2 Judgment Day. Jeez. <laughs> well, no. I guess it's not a hard and fast rule, it's a generality. Um, anyhow, so yeah, it was probably better the first time, but I could also, just guessing here, we all saw it in a theater the first time. Yeah. 
Uh, no, that, actually, I, I rented it. I, okay, I missed well then, the theater experience. Yeah. Well, then never mind for John. But for <laughs> Chewie and I, the theater experience for this movie, I think, is... It was great. I, I think it's as important as it was for the Babadook. Like, like, it's this whole different thing when you can totally sensory deprive yourself and just experience the movie. And, and the sense of this movie kind of has a slow pace to it and because it's not it's not going to answer these questions. So you have to do it and it really requires active viewing, but it's also slow. It really can lose you. Like you, you have to grab onto this thing and hang on or it's going to leave you behind. Mm-hmm. That is interesting uh, because, yeah, the, the, the soundtrack and the sound design are all very – They, I imagine they would be very immersive if you were in the theater. But on a on a stream, a download of it, you know, through a streaming service – no matter how HD you get it, 4K or whatever, and with a good sound, it's still there's distance. I'm not immersed. Like the scenes in the black goop are just the black screen of the TV with an outline of the living room, you know. So yeah, it, to your point, then maybe that's another thing. Whether people realize it or not, that's not grabbing them in this movie. Is that it's not immersive in the home video experience? Mm-hmm. No. Like not at all. I, I think this movie it it's one of those few that it's the theater is, in my opinion, the only way to really watch it. It's kinda like uh people are laughing at me for this one, but I, I feel the same way about Avatar. Like I like Avatar, but in an IMAX theater, I fucking love Avatar. In my living room, eh, it's a fun way to kill three hours. <laughs> totally different experience. Um yeah, yeah. that aside. Oh, uh sorry, John, you can say something first. Oh, I was just going to say to that point, we're, uh, we're waiting to see uh, Lawrence of Arabia in like a 70 millimeter thing, you know, once COVID's done and all that. But we've been meaning to get to it to see something like that, something that's big and experiential, just on a screen, immersive. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why I waited to see um, Blade Runner. Blade Runner and The Shining. Yeah. Until Ooh. I actually saw them in theaters. We and saw I- those both at the same theater. Yeah. yeah, and much better experiences. Like, I'm pretty sure if I tried to watch The Shining in my living room, I would have lost. There's... I would have been so distracted the whole time. I'm oh, sure. there's a lot oh, yeah. in common between this and The Shining Yeah, because of that. Like, I feel the same about The Shining. I think The Shining has more to grab onto because of the horror elements of it. But it's the same sort of, same sort of thing. If you start dozing in The Shining, it leaves you behind. Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. just too easy to get distracted during <laughs> See that you, film dude. unless you're in a theater. We're going fucking weird. <laughs> Well, and maybe that's the the difference too. Another difference, kind of why this could be a problem is because it's sci-fi and trying to go in that direction with some horror elements, you're kind of expecting a little bit more in terms of uh, something to chew on. Like with horror and like The Shining, you're like, there's stuff to grab onto and you're to pull out of it. And this isn't that, that's not what this is about. This is not interested in doing any of that. It's feel, feel, don't think, like experience it. So that's, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. And it's, you know, but I also I don't want to be rude to the movie either. Like I think it does give you plenty of things to chew on. It just it just doesn't give you a lot of rope. It gives you like here's an interesting thing. Here's this dude in his motorcycle with his motorcycles, motorcycle helmet, and he clearly works with this woman. But to what does she work for him? Does like what goes on here? And do you want to start going down that rabbit hole on your own as a viewer? Do you want to start trying to think and theorize and talk to your friends and engage on it, or do you just want to let that guy be that guy in that movie? And it's like, that's kind of what I like about it is that it really is up to you. It's kind of like, it's like a movie for a book club. Like, so what did you think? And I think that's really cool. And I think he did a, uh, Jonathan Glazer and both the Scarlett Johansson, because they both deserve the credit, did a great job of creating that world and that movie that invites you in, but then just kind of lets you go. It's like, come on in. What do you want to do here? Oh, that's up to you, man. I'm out of here. Yeah. I enjoy, I really enjoy movies like this where I don't even know if the director actually had answers to these things. He might have, but he I probably feel like, would say he does. <laughs> yeah, I just, I sometimes I literally do gravitate to films like this. I think it's one of the reasons why I love The Fall so much. Like movies that are rough around the edges, but have very interesting to say with those edges. And I don't need it to be spoon fed to me. Like, I do like to just kind of feel a movie. Yeah. And that, I mean, that is this movie. John said it earlier too. Like the feeling of it is very important. Yeah. And it's, you could almost say it has something to do with like, uh, I mean, it has a lot to do with feminism, I would say. Yeah. And because it, mean, it's all about like a woman being showcased as like the sexual object being used as a 
Jezebel or whatnot. Is it Jezebel? Or is it I from like? I do believe that this movie can be a bit feminist, uh, depending on which way you view it from. For me, it does ring true for that. Uh, whether or not that's what the director was going for, it could have just come at blah, blah. it could have just come out through Scarlett's. Uh, performance or just like her take on the character yeah because it very much feels like a woman who is just using her sexuality to conquer men whether or not she was ever given another option it just feels like this is what she knows uh and then she decides she doesn't want to do it anymore so then she goes off to just escape the guy who's checking up on her and she finds a guy who's willing to help her. Uh, eventually, they try to have sex. She apparently can't enjoy it. And he is actually being quite nice about it. Uh, but she's very, you know, distraught about this. So she just runs away. Uh, which, you know, quote unquote, a woman losing her virginity, not enjoying it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then when she's trying to, like, be by herself and figure out who she is, she gets attacked by another man and then murdered. So it's kind of, it just kind of feels like an allegory for a woman trying to rise above what society says about you being a sex object and then being punished for it. Yeah, no, that's definitely there. Yeah. Um, but not, I, I, I kind of like yeah, I can see that totally. Too yeah. with, but I like what you're saying earlier, too, with the whole, like, you don't know if this is what the director intended because I think that's also fair. Like, the yeah. movie's open enough where you could take it that way. Or you could take it the way that I saw on the internet where it's an allegory for sex workers. And I don't need to go crazy. Oh, it can there. work. That's the beautiful thing about yeah. a movie like this. It can work on more than one level. Yeah. And I think like if you start trying to meld it into something, you can totally use it and kind of explore ideas like that. And I don't mean that as a knock against the movie. I actually think it's something that it does very well. I think it's really oh, cool. Oh, it could totally be a mirror for sex workers. Yeah. Because she is told what to do by a singular man slash her pimp. He checks up on her and just walks around her looking at her body, essentially, it's like his making sure that his property is still in order. And she all brings him back to the same house all the time. I mean, they don't get any refunds or really get anything else after this one time payment uh, with your life. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, yeah. And it's like whether or not she gets to have a soul, make any decisions on her own. Try to have a life afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's all there. Um, and even the story that I think is actually just the one present in the movie, like not trying to interpret it one way or another, I think that's pretty fascinating too. Like I, I like, if you just take it as what I think is the more general interpretation of the movie, which is it's an alien drone esque being who kind of becomes self-aware and goes, my life sucks. Maybe I can just stay here as a human and fuck, nope. Uh, I think that story on its own is also very interesting. And yeah. I, I think the way the story is kind of told is very interesting. I, I, I think that's pro partly why I grabbed onto it so much the first time, like the first time I saw it, I'm like the story isn't really explicitly there, but when you kind of pick it up, it's like, that's a really good story though. Yeah. Like, I love the idea of an alien being like, I'm fucked. Can I make it work here? Like, can I get some food? Maybe I can sleep with somebody because that's what I was supposed to be luring these men here for anyways. Yeah, like, she never got to do never it. Never did it. Yeah. Uh, I, I think all of that's really cool. And the way that he tells a story, by basically, it's all just visual. Yeah. Like, you're not told any of this. It's all just, pay attention, motherfucker. And I she like might be able to eat. I mean, if you've never eaten anything and the first thing you eat is a bunch of sugar, you yeah. could just gag. Yeah. Why would people eat food? <laughs> It's so sweet it wants me to die. <laughs> what is this thing? It's it's either really good or really terrible. Yeah, I feel like she should have started with like some like milk and rice. Like a like a baby. <laughs> yeah, I mean she doesn't have a palate yet. That's why she couldn't eat. <laughs> Dumb alien. She's so unsophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb stupid alien. Gee whiz. <laughs> Don't know how to human. Mm -hmm. God, can't human on your first try? God, what? Honestly, whenever the other guy was ever on screen, he just felt like a robot to me. Which is interesting because in the first draft, he was a totally different character and played by Brad Pitt. 
I don't think Brad... Well, no, Brad Pitt likes his little roles here and there. Yeah, he didn't take this one. No, he didn't take... Did he actually turn it down after no, they redid it? No, I don't think they it? it to him. Yeah. The interesting total side note here. The interesting thing is Gemma Artenton claims, I don't know if it's ever been proven, that the role was initially offered to her and Jonathan Glazer wanted her, but the studio wouldn't give him any money without a bigger name attached. And that's why... I mean, that happens. Heads. It does. Oh, yeah. Amen. That seems plausible. That seems plausible. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just... I mean, look at uh, the movie Gods of Egypt. Or don't. <laughs> yeah, do we have to? Can we just not look at it? <laughs> <laughs> movie's atrocious. It's so bad and fucking ugly. But they tried. They're like, look at how many celebrities we got to pretend they're Arab. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite joke of all time, that movie was so bad, I got up and walked out of my apartment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was hoping for something like Mountain Olympus. Uh, no, no. It didn't, didn't happen. No, it didn't happen. No, it wasn't fun at all. No, not, not, not at all. Not at all. Um, so this movie wasn't really fun either. But well, this movie's not much, fun, much but it's better. engaging. <laughs> yeah. And it's actually, you'd still enjoy it the same way that you enjoy like a bitter food here and there. Yeah. It's a different taste, a different, a palate cleanser. This is a palate cleanser. Uh. Like a, yeah, oh man. Hmm. I just got my, my answer for the double feature at the end of this. Mm. When you said palate cleanser, it's like one movie just went bing, bing. It's the one. Anyhow, uh, so we've talked a lot about the movie, the plot, and uh, kind of everything that went into it. Um, we have not really talked that much about Scarlet, the, the woman of the month, and how fucking great she is in it, beyond just me saying that she's really good in it. She looks amazing, of course, because she always looks amazing. Yeah. I like the way they did her up. I don't remember any other things where she had like big black hair before. No. And, and I like that they they made her... I don't know how to say this. Like They, they didn't do movie star makeup. They no. did like normal woman... She I'm, did her own makeup. I did my own makeup. I'm going out yeah. of the town. Like, this, she clearly did not... I mean, she probably did. But they were going for the look of... I didn't just sit in a movie star's makeup chair for the last three hours to look like this. Yeah. It was like, I did my makeup in the morning. Yeah, How and I, I like yeah. that her clothing seemed very regional, yeah. I suppose. Uh, didn't look like a Hollywood outfit, per se. And just with her performance in general, she plays... She's so laser-focused. I love watching her face drive around looking for marks. And then when she she just, like, finds a good place to pounce, like she's a lion waiting in the bush... And then she's like, hey, I'm lost. Yeah. Can you give me, where's the M8 or whatnot? Yeah. And she, like, her tone of voice will change the way her eyes, she, like, she does the Tyra Banks thing where she smiles with her eyes oh, she, until she's done with them. And then they're back to stone cold. Yeah. Or the moment where she's like, do you have any family members or people who will miss you? And they're like, yes. Oh and God. she's like, oh, okay. Nope. You're not it. Out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she she stops smelling with her eyes the moment like, she notices anyone might care about this person. Uh, like the one guy who's like standing next to the van and you hear somebody like, yo, Andy! And just dead pale. And then she gone. drives away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I, I honestly think my, my favorite example of those laser-focused eyes are in probably the collective or least favorite scene in the movie. Least favorite scene, not a bad scene, though. I just fucking hate watching it. The baby? The baby scene. Yeah. Oh. When she's waiting for one of them to get soloed so she can walk over knock him out and drag him back to be drained or whatever i love the look on her face it's like a like a coyote waiting for a wolf to do all the work for them oh yeah, yeah. she she's just totally watching like she's not t- the blinking. wolf is the ocean <laughs> yeah <laughs> she's like one of them is going to survive and i'll go over and grab him when he's done yeah Poor baby. That poor fucking baby. And it <laughs> yeah. just it just has to be basically the same age as our son. Like, thanks, movie. He's younger. That's a corn, few months. Corn could at least try to walk after the guy. But they said eighteen months. Like he's yeah. fucking close. Yeah. And it's probably been the same amount of time like, movie. since I saw this movie when Karina was that age and now when like Thea's that age. So I've like I've seen it twice <laughs> when I have had kids at that age. So <laughs> both times has been like ugh. Ugh. You can't at least pick up the baby and leave it by the edge of the road where someone else might see him. No, they don't care. Yeah, they don't care at all. At least not then. Yeah. I think Scarlett 
at the end of the movie would not have left the baby. Yeah. She wouldn't have known what to do with it. But right. she would have been like, I'm going to put you over here near your own kind. Something like that. I'm going to push yeah. you towards those other human-shaped things. <laughs> um, but to your point, yeah, and she, that's kinda, her performance is just so engaging and interesting to watch. I, I think like I, I'm exploring her expression and what she's thinking and i'm able to kind of that's part of the allure to this this movie and why it works how it does it's just she's saying everything with her face and it's <laughs> to put it crudely she's just like her eyes are saying everything her expression how she's approaching everything you're getting all the pieces that you piece together because of her it doesn't work without her so Oh, yeah. The, she has a huge character arc throughout this mm-hmm. entire movie from Worker B, as I think we mentioned earlier, maybe, um, to I want to live and be yeah. my own thing. Like, that's a big fucking arc. And she has a handful of lines throughout the movie. Like, everything is done through body language, uh, her face, as we've also eloquently put it. Um, I mean, there is l- many moments in the movie when she stares at herself. Yeah. It's just yeah, she does an entire. It's I think it's really really fucking good. It was after this movie that like I'm pretty much sold. One thing I, I don't think we really touched on enough um, it has to be the way they shot it. Like there's this thing where you'll be watching the movie if you if you've been listening and you're just curious enough to still watch it after having the whole thing spoiled for you. Um, But as you're watching the movie, you'll realize that nobody in the movie, besides the clear movie star Scarlett Johansson, looks like a movie star. And that's because the whole movie was shot with real people. They did everything with hidden cameras, or they just had, like, I'm not sure how they did, like, the big crowd scenes, but, like, they never hired extras. The guys who walk up in the van are just guys. Like, they're not actors. These aren't lines. They're not scripted. It's an, like, they walked up to a girl who looked like Scarlett Johansson and talked to her because there's no fucking way that that could be Scarlett Johansson in that big-ass van <laughs> driving it herself. Like, that doesn't right, make right. sense. So I'll just go talk to that hot girl. And, like, they got a whole movie out of it. Like, and I think that is so impressive that, A, they shot it that way, that she did that way, and she stayed in character the whole time. I think the whole thing is just fucking amazing. Like, that, I can geek out about the making of this movie for. Probably the whole time we could have been talking this. Because mm. I think it's just amazing. It's awesome. It is good. It's cool. I still think the part with the hooligans trying to break into her vehicle was staged. I think so, too. I, I think, I mean, like, the they didn't really find a couple dying in the ocean. I'm like, well, we're no. going to cash in on this. Scarlet, yeah. be cool, man. <laughs> oh, man, can you imagine? <laughs> Keep acting. <laughs> She's like, this is horrible. It's like, no, you're an alien. You wouldn't react to this. Just... <laughs> Stay You're calm. Use it. Alien. Alien. <laughs> she does an amazing job running in wet ground, on wet ground with those heeled boots. There, every now and then you have to be like, oh yeah, she is Black Widow. But my God, her <laughs> ankles. Those things had to have hurt after some of those scenes. Black those Widow. ankles deserve the Still, Oscar. It yeah. doesn't matter how much you play Black Widow. <laughs> Wearing those heels does Ooh. not feel good forever. I thought she just was Black Widow. Yeah, I thought Black Widow was taking a break money. to do movies. Destroying my world. I am yeah. destroying it. That's okay. I'm going to destroy that little bit of a world because it's not real. <laughs> Robert Downey is not Iron Man. What? <laughs> you're, so you're telling me Chris he's not Evans dead? Is a miss- Chris Evans is Captain America. That makes sense. Because that is America's ass. I always thought he was the yeah. Human Torch. That's also kind of upsetting. Very confusing for me. It's a fiery <laughs> ass. <laughs> that sounds more like America's ass is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> like he should uh, go to a doctor. He's got butt, a fiery ass. <laughs> that butt is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, Brian here. Uh, I just realized while I'm editing this episode that there is really no way to cut it to explain the mood shift between what you just heard and what you're about to hear. But then to just explain, this episode took us almost two and a half hours to record, and it's because the recording just kept failing, and that started to really frustrate the hell out of us. So uh, we still finish the episode and have a good time, but we were definitely a little bit more, uh, a little more bitter on the back end of this, uh, mostly speaking for myself. But yeah, enjoy the rest of the episode. Bye! Should we just do... So about the feminism part. Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. If no. you were back. <laughs> So I'm not sure much of this conversation I'm leaving in, but we've had a lot of audio problems of recording this episode. So if you have had, listened to something that's been even remotely enjoyable so far, then I'm awesome. Go yeah. me. I definitely Go cut that out. Brian. I, I probably didn't. Uh, <laughs> double features. Double features. There was going to be a whole like favorite part thing, but no. No. I love the whole movie. It's not an insult to the movie. It's an insult to how many times the internet's crapped out on us and I don't want it to happen again. So, uh, double features. <coughs> My phone fell. What did you do to that phone? It just falls. It's like it's trying to die. <laughs> it's haunted. I was going to cut all that out, but I really like that. That's a good scolding. I got to leave that in. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be on the bed. We're sleeping, and suddenly we just hear a clunk. And I'm like, "Is that your phone again?" And I just hear Brian moan. <laughs> really wants to be on the ground. Oh, it just so wants to live I its life. Such a ridiculous amount of money on it. It's awesome. Maybe Anyhow. it has a magnet in it. Magnets the core of the planet. It just experiences gravity differently. <laughs> I guess that would mean it'd be heavier. Do you have a double feature of this movie? I do. Uh, so do I. You're not gonna like it. Do I ever? Neon Demon. <laughs> I thought you were gonna I say was contact. So afraid you're gonna say contact. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no sexuality in contact. <laughs> Are you sure? Uh, but actually, no. We need to rewatch it so I can double check. Sure. <laughs> Neon uh, Demon, please continue talking with the other movie that has made me get up from the couch to scream about how much I hate watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Neon Demon is another movie about intense female sexuality directed by a man. Uh, and that one is done poorly. It also has some weird science fiction-y, some weird psychological stuff going on they eat a girl it's weird. yeah they eat a girl and it makes them uh. younger they're like windigos yeah uh and the one of them feels bad about it and she pukes up an eye or something i don't remember but then still eats the eye she no the other girl eats the eye uh. maybe the other girl like it's a weird movie i don't remember i don't I, i've actually grown to like it a lot more since my initial watching and storming around screaming really? how much i hate it Oh, really? It's definitely a movie that will make you feel things. Oh, yeah. But I would say watch The Undemon first, so you can be like, woof. And then watch Under the Skin afterwards and be like, oh. <sighs> okay. That's a better movie. I have this thing with this movie where, as upsetting as it is, and it is very upsetting, I still find the movie rather calming for some reason. I don't know why. I think maybe it's the score or the way that it's shot. But it's a very upsetting movie that at the end of it, I feel like I can just go to sleep. Hmm. Um, and I can say that kind of palate cleansing. We mentioned this earlier. And the other movie, this one does not let me go to sleep afterwards, that I'd put to that level of palate cleansing of like, well, whatever I was feeling before this movie, I definitely feel something different now that had even remotely close to the same effect as this one did was Sorry to Bother You. So... Okay. I would pair this. I would probably... Fuck, I don't know. I would watch Sorry to Bother You. And then as you're sitting there with your head just going, What the fuck did I just watch? I'd watch Under the Skin. And and it, it might ground you a little. It might ground you a little. <laughs> <laughs> or it's kind of like riding yeah. out the, the trip, you know? like Yeah. Yeah, because sour bo- Sorry to Bother You does... you feel like you have an idea of where it's going and then you're wrong yeah and then you're wrong <laughs> so under the skin you kind of just accept that you don't really know what's going on the whole time yeah it'd be a good primer yeah i would totally attend that double feature people would look oh, at yeah. it like what <laughs> all right i'll give it a shot <laughs> all right john what about you i'm gonna go the uh, uh slightly different route and i'm going to pair this with ghost world uh, Scarlett Johansson in two different indie movies from different eras and uh, probably start with Ghost World first and make it like the prequel to this <laughs> or something stupid like that. Have a real pleasant afternoon. 
Oh yeah, yeah no. Like after <laughs> seeing the double feature, it's like, all right, good night, everybody. Have a good night. Sleep well. <laughs> Remember, none of that is your life. Um, <sighs> all right. So I think we've said everything we can say about under the skin. We've done everything. I think it was good. At least in one of the three recording sessions that we've had tonight. We've, we've at least talked things. for four hours about this movie, so we're good. We've yeah. covered it all. <laughs> Whether or not you get to hear all of uh, it is... Uh... <laughs> my butt hurts a little bit. Well, there you go. Now we have definitely podcasted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it ain't a podcast till your butt hurts. Just a little bit. Um, plugs. Check out every Monday where we have Corona Cartoons. Uh, this weekend we have... I have no idea yet because I haven't talked to anyone about being on it, but uh, we'll have an episode. Uh, I'll record it this weekend. It'll be fun. Nice. I have no It'll idea what good. it's going to be. I liked it. Uh, it's a surprise for both you and the current version of me. Um, and look, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great one. I think. I believe you. John, what about you? <laughs> uh, yeah, we've got uh, Demon Days on Wednesday. Uh, still going strong. We're going to record our non like non in person episodes coming up pretty soon. So we'll see how that goes. We're all getting used to the whole. Um, pandemic thing and being separated we miss each other deeply but it, you know we still have the game and it's fun and we're having a blast cool watch superstore in september whenever or, now. Come. or yeah well on hulu but yeah. I'm about new episodes because we're done for this season that's true and we don't really know when we're coming back Does so anyone... probably what, october or no what better time to go back and rewatch from episode one yeah yeah, yeah go do that uh, so anyhow, thank you very much for listening. Uh, that is the end of this episode. Bye. 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 Bye.